Hello friends. Since a fortnight, I have been warning you that the markets are preparing for an upside. A fortnight ago, I uh, uh, in my video told you that the market might attempt to make a new high. Last week, I told you it all depended on banking and banking did perk up slightly last week. In this video now, I want to discuss as to what is the outlook going ahead and is the market, is the nifty particularly going to make a new lifetime high. So let's jump right in and on your screen right now is the weekly roundup which tells you that the bank nifty rose higher and uh, uh, percentage wise uh, uh, harder than the nifty 50 and uh, uh, thanks to the uh, sharp decline in the US dollar index which I have been telling you in my videos and in my uh, media columns uh, uh, is good for emerging markets. When the dollar falls, emerging market economies start to gain because it leads to lower imported inflation. And a weak dollar triggered a spectacular rally in both gold and silver. And in spite of a weak dollar, crude and uh, natural gas prices fell, which is again positive because it leads to lower inflation. The USD INR fell, which is the rupee rose versus the dollar. And that was a huge positive. The other positive is that the Indian 10-year benchmark bond yields fell to 7.26%. Now, if you actually see this uh, uh, market roundup window, all the losers, the red uh, uh, lettering is all in the right places. Lower oil, lower gas, uh, uh, a falling dollar and a falling 10-year benchmark bond yield. So these are all the right things that happened last week. The NSE gain market capitalization, which is not surprising, although I would have wanted a bigger gain. And the MWPL rose to 31.21. Uh, I uh, wanted it to cross 29 to 30% in uh, uh, last week. Uh, and that's what it did. The US market provided ample tailwinds by uh, rallying all the three indices rose and it was the NASDAQ or the technology index that rose significantly. On your screen right now is the daily chart of the US Dow Jones Industrial Average. It rallied on uh, four out of five trading sessions. It's cleared the hurdle of 33,272 heading towards the uh, uh, previous swing high of 34,281. Death cross remains in place. The 50 day moving average is below the 200 day moving average, but the 50 day average is rising. Price is above both the averages. So uh, uh, the panic or the fear has abated. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 index, the, the benchmark that directly impacts our technology stocks. It's uh, risen past above its 50-day uh, moving average, which be remains below the 200-day moving average. So the death cross still remains in place. But uh, uh, the 11,682 hurdle has been overcome. Now, uh, the next big hurdle will be the 12,500 odd levels, which is the 200-day moving average. Should the price cross that? you would see some more gains in Indian IT stocks. Now for the broadest index of them all, the S&P 500, where again the death cross remains in place, but the price is above the 50-day uh, average, not yet crossed the 200-day average, and the 4,100 remains the next big hurdle to uh, uh, basically cross over before the guys sitting on the fence can come out and start buying again. Now let's take a look at uh, uh, our in-house uh, exclusive indicators starting with the MWPL. This is a two marshmallow theory, two marshmallow traders uh, gauge of risk appetite. The marshmallow theory is in the description and uh, in the pinned comment below. So what we are seeing is MWPL has crossed above uh, 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 the uh, October highs of 29% by uh, rising to 31.21% last week. Now this raises the probability of MWPL testing or nearing the recent high of 33.59 which it had reached in September. That means risk appetite from traders 
is rising. MWPL is nothing but the percentage uh, exposure utilized uh, as a component of the total exposure allowed by the regulator. And let's now to take a look at the index and stock futures turnover, which appear a little subdued. But there's a caveat here. Do remember last week was a truncated one due to Guru Nanak Jayanti and uh, Tuesday was a holiday and therefore the turnover is bound to appear lower as compared to the week prior. We need to watch out for the turnover figures in the coming week. Now for the advanced decline ratio, which admittedly has eased. It's fallen below one is to one. This is remember the average of all trading sessions of the week. Now, since a fortnight, slowly but surely, the advanced decline ratio has been easing as the Nifty nears the all time high. There is a churn. Stocks are moving out of weaker hands into stronger hands because uh, 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 there is a section of the market that feels uh, the Nifty may not be able to reach an all time high. So that's fair. Uh, but uh, we are way above uh, uh, the uh, 0.20 and 0.25 uh, levels that we've seen in the past. And that is a, a, a minor mercy. Now for the basis. Basis is nothing but the discount or premium enjoyed by the future compared to cash. And it is also a gauge of the risk appetite of two marshmallow traders. If they are willing to pay a premium, that means they are optimistic about the market. On a week on week basis, the bank nifty saw basis compression as did the nifty 50. Do remember that the basis just like options premium also erodes as time to expiry gets closer. But what is critical to note is that the basis is not inverted by inverted. I mean, futures are not trading at a discount to cash. And only when that happens, will we start suspecting that uh, 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 the outlook has turned bearish. So the bulls are still in control because the basis is positive. Now for the impetus, impetus uh, uh, of the bank Nifty has risen on a week on week basis, whereas the Nifty has fallen. Do remember my friends that it was Friday that uh, saw a surprise sharp up move in our markets thanks to the US market where inflation data came in uh, 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 to the pleasant surprise of traders and therefore the Dow uh, and the Nasdaq gained spectacularly. That is what is responsible for the sharp turnaround in the Indian markets. So the impetus has not yet caught on. The reason being that majority of retail investors have got left out. So we need to watch the impetus in the coming week. Now for the LWTD, uh, the latest indicator that uh, I have added a couple of uh, quarters ago, what we have seen is the, the week on week gain of the nifty percentage gain loss line uh, indicated as a blue line has eased to 1.28%. But the LWTD has fallen below zero to minus 0.71. That tells you that uh, the retail have uh, basically not participated enough in the upthrust. Like I told you, the rally basically took everyone by surprise on Friday, thanks to uh, what happened on Thursday night in the US markets. So uh, LWTD needs to be watched even more carefully in the coming week. And don't worry about it. This is a metric that I post on my social media accounts every day. If you care to connect with me, you can stay updated, uh, uh, especially on our Telegram channel where I put in a lot of views, news, uh, uh, my own um, interpretation of the markets and a lot of charts and uh, uh, data tables, etc. Now coming to the footprint of the four market participants, starting with the FIIs, what we have seen is that they've reduced their individual stock futures long positions marginally, very, very marginally, but they've gone gung ho on index futures longs. Where DIIs are concerned, uh, they've cut short their index, uh, their, their individual stock future shorts and uh, uh, They've also reduced their uh, uh, index future shorts very, very marginally. Do remember that DIIs 
happen to uh, support the market by buying in cash and hedge it by selling in futures. So don't uh, jump to the conclusion that DIIs uh, are bearish on the markets. They are not. This is basically a, a reflect reflection of their hedges. Now for the prop traders, these are brokers own um, uh, proprietary trades after uh, insiders. These guys are the best reliable uh, uh, market gauge because they know who's buying how much and at what price. Their individual uh, uh, stock futures uh, long positions have risen uh, uh, by approximately uh, uh, 5000 lots, whereas their index futures net short positions have almost I'm saying almost doubled. So what they've done is they've increased their uh, stock longs marginally and they've doubled down on their short positions on the indices. So they are hedging. Now for the retail guys who've been doing all the heavy lifting after the COVID based lockdowns were imposed. They've reduced their individual stock futures long positions at higher levels as also their index net long positions. They are playing safe. They are basically hedging uh, against the fact that the Nifty may take a while or may not even go past the all time high of 18,600 plus. So they are appearing marginally cautious. Friends, I now come uh, to the four heavyweights uh, that are uh, the heaviest weighted indices in the Nifty and uh, two of them are also uh, weighted in the Bank Nifty. So the direction that's taken by these four counters determines the direction that the indices will take. And uh, we start with the biggest boy of them all, Reliance Industries. The daily chart on your screen tells you that it's crossed another hurdle of 2,618. The price has risen on two out of four trading sessions. The price is comfortably above its 25 day exponential moving average, which is a month long holding on cost of an average bull. The average itself is rising and the last mile hurdle is 2,677 levels. Once it crosses above this hurdle, we can say that uh, 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 increased amount of short covering can uh, uh, push this price higher. And why is it important for the Nifty? Because it's weighted at 11.03% in the Nifty 50 and has a beta of 1.09. So A, it's the heaviest weighted stock in the Nifty. B, it is volatile and therefore uh, uh, leads to bigger swings in the index. Mercifully, the impact cost is 0.01%, which means the bid and offer spreads which is absolutely critical for system based uh, uh, model traders. Uh, uh, the bid and offer spreads are extremely narrow, which is what impact cost is low for. Now the second big boy HDFC Bank, second heavily weighted stock in the Nifty at 8.26%, but the heaviest weighted in the bank Nifty at 25.61%. Fantastic rally on Friday. What a huge power candle that's taken it above the previous swing high of 1541. The price is significantly higher than the 25 day exponential moving average, which is a month long holding on cost of a bull. The average itself is rising. So my guess is the stock has already made a good base and uh, there could be some amount of profit taking or even consolidation, but uh, uh, the outlook has definitely turned cheerful, which means this stock can boost both the Nifty and the Bank Nifty both and therefore one can expect good things in the coming week. Third stock Infosys Nifty weightage 7.06% beta is 1.01 which is almost the same as the Nifty itself. It's rallied past the 1555 levels thanks to the rally in the Nasdaq 100. Do remember the Nasdaq 100 has risen sharply on uh, a Friday last. The price has moved above its uh, 25 week exponent, 25 day exponential moving average, which itself is turning upwards. Now what we need to see is a rally past uh, 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 the 1640, 1650 odd levels, uh, uh, which basically will trigger more short covering and therefore a speedier rally. Friends, I now come to the fourth uh, uh, heavily weighted stock in the Nifty ICICI Bank weightage of 7.94% in the Nifty and 24.62% in the Bank Nifty. After HDFC Bank, 
ICICI Bank is the second most heavily weighted stock in the bank nifty. Beta is 1.03 and off late it's been consolidating. The price remains above its moving average. The moving average is also sloping upwards, but it's thrashing around uh, between 940 and uh, 890 odd levels. So we need a clear directional breakout. As long as the price is above 867, no harm done. In the short run, there could be some consolidation, but ideally speaking, a rally past 920, 930 would be a very, very welcome sign for the bulls. So let's wait and watch where ICICI Bank is concerned. Friends, I uh, now come to the bond market, which I have been watching on your behalf for many, many years. And I have been telling you that as a banking stock investor or a bank nifty trader, do not fall into the trap of ignoring bond yields. It's the naive trader who, who uh, is reckless enough to uh, ignore bonds. Bond yields have a, a sort of come down sharply. I will not use the word collapse. So I have told you that the 7.25 levels are a critical threshold as far as I'm concerned. And we have tested that level last week. And those of you who've been following me long enough uh, will now understand why uh, I've been uh, advocating laddering of sovereign yields at uh, all uh, levels because we just don't know when they top out and they come down sharply. I wanted my online family to achieve a, a, a very optimal uh, uh, return on investment, yield uh, on, on investment by laddering and that laddering move has paid off. What we now need to see is whether the 7.10% is respected by the bond markets. Do remember that the Indian currency has gained very, very sharply against the US dollar last week, which has led to some amount of uh, a relief rally in uh, uh, equities and the bond markets. And should the rupee continue to gain against the dollar, don't uh, uh, be surprised if the bond yields remain under pressure for a while. Continue to uh, stagger and uh, ladder your uh, uh, fixed income uh, sovereign investments because we just don't know which direction the markets will take. Friends, bond markets done. I now come to the US dollar index. This was the prima donna reason why emerging markets, including India, rallied last week. A lower uh, US dollar is uh, uh, very positive because uh, number one, our imports, especially oil and gas become cheaper. Number two, uh, the forex debt that uh, both the government and the corporate sector, which uh, uh, is being nursed and uh, uh, serviced by service, I mean interest paid thereupon, becomes cheaper to service as well as redeem when the rupee gains against the dollar. And I've told you many a times uh, over the years that uh, 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 there is something that uh, savvy, experienced veteran traders, and I've been trading these markets since 1986, will tell you that there is something called a US presidential cycle. Ahead of the US elections, and there were midterm elections on 7th of November this year, there is a standard uh, a blueprint, a playbook. Strengthen the US dollar, subdue the price of gold and silver, boost up the equity markets, boost up the employment data, and generally give a feel good factor within the voting community, voter community, so that they can go out and vote for the party in power. This is a standard operating procedure, works all the time ahead of every US elections. And I'm surprised that people are surprised that the Dixie, the US dollar index is falling. This is something you can mark my words, hold me accountable, give me a shout, ahead of the next election in 2024 in the US as well. So the falling US dollar index has plunged below the 109.14 levels, which I advocated uh, as a watching um, uh, uh, swing a low uh, pivot last week, and it has closed comfortably below that. It's now uh, at a, a three month low and the price is sharply below its 25 day exponential moving average, which is a month long holding on cost of an average bull. The average itself is pointed lower, so more declines cannot be ruled out. 
The weekly chart on your screen tells you uh, uh, that uh, the 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month holding on cost of an average bull is also violated. So the medium term outlook has also turned softer. Last week, I pointed out to you that the candle made last week was an inverted hammer, which means bulls attempted to push the price of the US dollar index higher, but failed and the price closed in the lower end of the weekly range. That itself told you that more trouble for the bulls lay in store. Can there be a pullback rally, a relief rally? Yes, there can always be, but the outlook remains under pressure in the absolute near term, which happens to be good for emerging markets, including India. Friends, last week I advocated a range between 113.10 on the upside and 108.50 on the downside, which was violated because of extreme declines to 106.14 levels on Friday. In the coming week, I expect a range between 108.90 on the upside and 103.90 on the downside. The range might appear wider than usual, but do remember the base effect is big. Last week's weekly candle itself is huge. So when the base is big, the extrapolated number also happens to be bigger. The, the sharper the price of the dollar falls, the more uh, uh, bullish uh, outlook will be in equities and to a certain degree, even commodity markets. So do watch, please. Now we come uh, to the Bank Nifty, which gained 2.13% and rose on three out of four trading sessions last week. What you can see on the daily chart on your screen is that the price has broken out above the 41,840 previous swing high, which was uh, 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 made in September. And the price is above its 25 day exponential moving average, a month long holding on cost of an average bull. The average itself is pointed upwards. The only minor observation here is that Friday's uh, 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 trading session has locked has logged a, a long leg doji, a very small body in the center of the candle, which means the bulls and bears were even Stevens on an open to close basis. Although the closing was definitely higher than the previous session. We need to overcome the high of Friday at 42,345 levels in the spot before the next uh, uh, upthrust can begin. Remember what I told you in my last week's video, the, the rally will be largely dependent and fueled by the banking space. Coming to the weekly chart, what we are seeing is a bullish uh, candle on the weekly uh, chart as well. Price is far above its 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month holding on cost of an average bull. So the medium term outlook though remains positive also points towards some consolidation because either the price falls towards the moving average or the moving average goes towards the price which is consolidating and pausing for breath. Can there be a little bit of a pause? Quite possible. Is the outlook positive? Yes, it is. So a pause but undertone remaining optimistic on the bank nifty for now unless fresh evidence to the contrary surfaces you should remain optimistic. In the week before last, this index was number 10 on our in-house uh, 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 volatility uh, rankings list. Last week, it jumped five notches to number five. Now, a word of caution here. It might appear that the Bank Nifty has become a lot more volatile. It's not. It's just that last week's decline in the rankings was an outlier. The Bank Nifty is invariably in the top five or top six uh, most volatile counters in the derivatives segment in our in-house rankings. So last week I advocated a range between 42,750 on the upside and 39,750 on the downside, which held perfectly well in spite of all that volatility. In the coming week, I estimate a range between 43,600 on the upside and 40,650 on the downside. Play carefully, maintain stop losses without fail and keep 
the traded turnover exposure slightly curtailed. That will protect you from untoward shocks, if any. I've been warning my uh, uh, online family, uh, especially on our uh, Telegram channel. The contact coordinates are uh, in the description and in the pinned comment below, and they also appear in the fag end of this video. That statistical beta or pure price volatility, especially intraday volatility, is jumping higher month on month. These are VUCA markets, volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. You need to be particularly careful. The headline indices might look uh, very, very bullish, but when you actually go out there and try to take a bite out of this burger in uh, call the market, Mr. Market, Mother Market, I call it, you will find that trading profits are not as easy as they appear to be uh, uh, to a third party, to a bystander. So uh, uh, be very careful of the volatility, please. Jumping now to the Nifty 50, which rose 1.28% and it rose on two out of four trading sessions uh, last week, as you can see on the daily chart on your screen. The 18,115 hurdle was overcome. It was overcome uh, in the week before last as well. And now, the 18th of January 2022 swing high at 18,351 level will be the next area to watch out for. Should we overcome that hurdle, we are closer by a step to the 18,600 odd levels that were reached in October 2021, which is the all time high of the Nifty. Achievable? Yes, I think so. Quite achievable. But let's wait and watch. The price is above its 25 day exponential moving average, which is a month long holding on cost of a bull. So longs are comfortable. The average itself is rallying higher, which means the outlook is optimistic. And staying above the 18,115 level will cheer the bulls even more. Let's see the weekly chart on your screen wherein um, uh, uh, a hammer kind of uh, a candle has been formed. The uh, price is fairly narrow from open to close, whereas the long shadow below tells you uh, uh, the kind of selling pressure that we saw intra week. It was Friday, which turned things around for the bulls. Now here again, crossing the 18,351 level is extremely critical. Price is above the 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month holding on cost of a bull. So the medium term outlook remains positive. The average itself has begun to turn upwards after consolidating sideways for a couple of weeks. So bulls are definitely edging closer towards a new all time high. Friends, in the week before last, this index was number eight on our in house volatility rankings that we maintain. And uh, last week, it fell three notches to uh, come down to number 11. It's not because uh, the Nifty was any less volatile, but because individual stock volatility rose sharply. We'll see why towards the end of this video. So stick around, please. Now, last week, I advocated a range between 18,650 on the upside and 17,600 on the downside, which held perfectly well in spite of all that volatility. In the coming week, I estimate a range between 18,850 on the upside and 17,850 on the downside. Here again, volatility remains elevated. So please cut down your exposure levels and maintain stop losses. Now, friends, the final chart or charts that I want to share with you, which will gauge the retail risk appetite. This is something that I have added in the last couple of months. And thank you for your wonderful feedback uh, 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 as to uh, uh, the uh, new features that we are constantly adding. It keeps us going. So keep your feedback coming, please. Now, if retail traders start to take a bigger exposure in individual stocks as compared to uh, indices, the risk appetite has gone up. Why? Now, being a, a statistical models trader, uh, uh, deploying mathematical models, I would want the cause and effect, the, the reason behind uh, why I do what. Why is risk appetite supposed to be higher when traders take more exposure to stocks? Because stocks on an average in India 
have a volatility of more than three and a quarter percent on an intraday basis, whereas indices move between 1.25 to 1.75 percent intraday. So when investors or traders are taking a higher exposure to more volatile counters, that means they are they are gung ho, they are greedy for profits, they are willing to take more risk. And within the stock space, if they are taking a higher exposure to futures, which are more expensive, by more expensive, I mean there's more capital to be deployed by way of span margin by mark to market as compared to options. That shows that the risk appetite is even higher. Now, let's see what's happened on the daily chart of the options and uh, futures turnover. The sky blue line, which indicates uh, uh, the stock options turnover is at an all time high in the 20 day period of this chart. The olive green line, which is a stock futures turnover as a percentage of the turnover contributed is at an almost three month high. So traders are definitely gung ho on individual stocks. That means risk appetite has gone up sharply. Now index futures turnover is also increased, but not to the high periods where stock futures and options are. As a matter of fact, in the next chart, you will see the index options turnover, which is the biggest component in the NSE derivative segment has fallen to the lowest after 21st October 2022. It's, it's fallen to a little over 94%. Yes, that's right. The index options contribution to the derivatives turnover is 90% plus. And the fact that it's fallen to the lowest after 21st October 2022 tells you that traders are switching from indices to individual stocks. That's a big positive. They are taking bigger risks. Do remember that the MWPL is nearing a two month high. So risk appetite is not a problem. Follow up support to this risk appetite is what I need in the coming week before we can say that the all time high is coming. And what is the probability looking at the risk appetite and looking at the monetary inflows plus a whole lot of other metrics. Also remember uh, the torque indicator that I shared with you uh, last week, the torque indicator and there are other indicators that we are developing as well, ricochet, etc are now turning even more aggressive. So the probability of an all time high uh, with risk appetite has improved. Friends, I now come to the most popular segment for uh, uh, statistical model traders, wherein I give you five stocks that have gained the highest amount of impetus on Friday. So they're likely to move higher where an intraday range is concerned. You take small exposure, wait for large price moves and five stocks that have lost the most amount of impetus, which means they'll make small moves. There you take big exposure, wait for small price moves. This helps scalpers. So the list of impetus gainers is led by Britannia Industries, followed by Dr. Lal Path Lab, number three, Bank of Baroda, number four, Gujarat Narmada Fertilizers, and number five, City Union Bank. Here you take small exposure, wait for large price moves. The uh, 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 list where you take big exposure, wait for small price moves, impetus losers is led by IGL at number one, Bharat Heavy Electricals, number two, Multi Commodity Exchange, number three, number four, Cummins, and number five, Mahanagar Gas Limited. Friends, this list is valid only for Monday. If you wish to be updated Tuesday through Friday, please subscribe to our free telegram channel wherein I put up a lot of cool stuff and a whole lot of pivot levels for option writers, for futures traders, daily, weekly, monthly. You want it, we got it. And before I sign off from this video, a uh, reminder, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here good, bad or ugly. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. So please keep your feedback coming. And hey, help me reach out to fellow like-minded savvy traders like yourselves by sharing my video with your online social media groups, WhatsApp, etc. 
and help me reach out to a bigger audience. I wish you have a very, very profitable week. Thank you for your patience in sticking around with me in this video. Till we meet again in my next. This is Vijay Bhamgwani signing off for now. Take care. Bye-bye.